Howdy everybody in YouTube land. So this is part three of the Macintosh TV Resurrection Restoration series. So the analog board. Um, here's what I've done so far. I have the analog board here that I need to um, recap and do all the solder joints and all that fun stuff. That's a common problem with these. But I'm running into some issues and it's probably... Gonna, you're going to run into them too when you work on these. So, I ordered the capacitor kit just to make things a lot more simple for me. I ordered the kit from uh, a website called Console 5. And anybody watching this video has probably already heard of them. It's just convenient. I don't have to go on Mauser and try to hunt everything down. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just easier. The problem is, I bought this just out of pure you know curiosity to see if it would even work but the problem is um the, the the kit that they sell is for the macintosh color classic so okay that's fine this is a different board this is not the color classic analog board but they're very similar but i guarantee there's going to be differences um, what differences? I don't know yet. But here's the other problem. These are for a different uh, project. Upcoming videos. Um, Apple II. We'll get to that later down the line. So, um, anyways. Garbage. Uh, the other problem is, when you're going online to look for material, it's been so long since I've recapped the, these, I do not know where my documentation is, where my lists are, or any of that. It's been too long. So, and the ones I did recap were color classics anyways. So the information that's on the internet, of course, is the color classic diagram. Uh, I cannot find anything online for this particular board. It's almost like this board was just forgotten about. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to have the same problem as this one. You're going to you're going to have to pay attention to it. You're going to have to do it. So what I'm going to have to do is document the differences on here, and just just to make sure. Uh, there were other websites out there where a lot of this stuff was saved. Unfortunately, the one the centralized resource that a lot of this stuff was it was saved on, including the logic board pictures that had the caps marked on the logic board and stuff like that is gone and an archive.org is missing a bunch of stuff so archive.org is not a foolproof method for saving information and do not rely on that when websites disappear so when you're on when you're on a website and i need to learn this lesson too because when you're on a website and you're you're trying to find information that you need to work on this archive all of it yourself or put it somewhere else because the information's lost there's no diagram for the logic board that indicates where the capacitors are. And that's important in this situation because the, the logic board I got is missing its caps. Someone cleaned them off already. I do not know where they go and what values they are because I cannot find the data. The website that hosted the data is gone. So, yeah. Anyways, so that's my rant of the day for this particular, uh, you know, situation I'm in. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start recapping it, and we're going to note any differences um, in this video, uh, you know, on this paper. And that's really the only reason why I'm doing this video is because this is just a recap and go, really. But I want to go over if there's any differences, that way it's documented. And also, I want to go through the common solder joints that are bad, and if there are bad, I want to point them on the camera and know that you have to to take care of that situation otherwise it's going to be pretty much straightforward um it should be a relatively quick video uh, and we'll check some of these caps and see which one's leaking or if any so let's get started on getting this done so i got the shield off and the ground off all that and this is all loose so i can remove this i also took the plastic piece and removed it from back here to get it out of the way and get the dust out uh, there's already one difference that I've noticed and I want to point it out right now on the paperwork it shows a one microfarad capacitor being up here with one chip and nothing else anywhere else like there's a cap that's supposed to be here but it's not well on this board we have both chips which makes sense because it's stereo audio but that cap is not up here like it shows here however it shows three one microfarad at 50 volts here 
So this one was probably that one there. And these two don't exist on this board down here. It shows one, which is probably this one. But then that one doesn't, I don't know where that goes. So that's a difference that has to be noted. So I'm going to mark that down on this board just so we know that that is a difference. First two capacitors I'm removing are these two and it's full of hot glue and they will not come out. Now, I heated the solder joints up with my desoldering iron and they stink like dead fish so I know they're bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the heat gun, put it on low heat, heat the bottom of the board a little bit so I can try to pull those capacitors off. Alright, without a little fanfare, I mean it's still a little warm but they've been removed as soon as I got them hot. Uh, on the bottom side and the top side, they literally came right off, no problem. And you can see the green crusties in there a little bit. They're just getting going. So those are going to be pulled out. Now i got to do these two. Uh, first off, I want to make sure before I get too carried away. Ow, it's hot still. 56 at 10. What are these? 56 at 10. Okay, so those are correct. We've got 33, 33, and 1,000. So are these 33, 33... Um, I can't tell what that one is. Thousand. So those are also correct. So let's get those out too. Um, so we know that those are valid for this circuit. Alrighty then. So I've got these cluster of capacitors replaced. I just pulled the next cluster out back here. And there is another difference I need to make. These are these three here. 100 microfarad at 100 volt. That's the same. A uh, thousand at 16, which is also the same. You just see that in there, but it shows a thousand at 35. Well, this is a thousand at 25, so that is not correct. So we need to make a correction in this um, that this is actually. A 25 on this particular board design that way we noted not that a 35 is gonna hurt if anything it might be a little bit better but just a note everything is going good up to this point I have all of these changed I have these three changed these two and these three here so this section from here to here has been done um, other than the two uh, changes I had to note. Well, this one here was one of them. I had to note. Everything's been all right. Uh, now we've got a new problem. This is correct, which is this guy here, but this one shows a 100 microfarad at 25 volt. But this one here is a. Let's see if I can't get it in the light properly. It's a 47 microfarad at 25 volt. So that is incorrect. So that is going to have to get corrected to 47 microfarad, which I think I have those on hand anyways. That's not a big deal. So uh, that's a 47. So there's a design difference in that too. Um, let's see, what else do we have? This one here shows 100 at 25. That's correct. Uh, next to that... To the adjustment potentiometer is what? 1 UF 50 volt? Yeah. Come on. Uh, yep, that's correct. So those two are accurate. So I think. Hmm, yeah. That's really it. Let's see. Those two there. 1 UF 50. Let's see, what are these? 1 UF, 1 UF, yeah, so those are accurate, but that one's not. All right, so we just got to get the right one for that one. So the recapping is almost done, but I ran into a few discrepancies, of course. I didn't want to pause and record for every discrepancy, so I just made a note. Um, so what I have is there was one that was labeled 35 volts but what was installed was a 25 volt everything else is the same with the exception of these 2.2 microfarad at 200 volts well i only got 
100 volts in the kit. So uh, I don't know what, this is the Color Classic board to begin with, and this was a Color Classic kit. So there's a mistake made somewhere, or there was a different board revision that this kit was based on. But this is actually the same in here, and I don't have them, so I'm going to have to wait on those. But yeah, that can't, that, that's not going to work. So that's different. Uh, also, there's the 100 microfarad 25 volt left over, and that's because it was supposed to go here, but that was a 47 that's on this board. The other thing is there's an extra capacitor here. It is a, what is it? 10 microfarad 16 volts. Well, that's nowhere on this sheet that I can see. And it's also nowhere on this board that I can see either. So I'm not sure what that's for. Maybe that's for a different revision of the Color Classic board that this paper is not talking about. So anyways, I got two of the wrong voltage requirements here. That seems to be extra. And this was the wrong value. So that's where we're at at this point. I've got to order those two capacitors but it's not going to stop me from testing this because the most important capacitors really to change on these are this one here all of those over here as well as this one there and this one back here which they actually have put in squares it tells you because the reason why they're circled like this this one's not but it should be Matter of fact, I'm going to box this in because this one should be important as well. And here's why. These values of capacitors are low ESR. And it's the low ESR, low impedance, even though they're slightly different. The low ESR, low impedance capacitors are the ones that are more caustic. And it will leak a lot sooner and faster than the rest of these will. Uh, the reason why is of the uh, the solution that's in here the electrolyte solution is a lot stronger to try to bring the ESR down so it just it becomes more acidic and stuff like that but uh anyways so this one is not included but it should be because it's right off the flyback this is the B boost and this is important too because it's a high speed switching circuit so that has to be replaced that has to be replaced the same thing with this one because on a color classic there's two diodes here that get really hot, which bakes this capacitor and causes it to fail. On the LC525, 575, and Mac TV, it only has the one, and it doesn't get nearly as hot, so we don't have to worry about that, and it didn't show any signs of leaking anyway, so that's taken care of, but I changed them all, so these two are probably okay i can probably leave them in there and get away with it but i'm going to change them when i get them in but for now it's not going to hurt anything i'm going to go through my stash and replace this one and then i'm going to replace the two one microfarad 50 volts up here that were not included as part of this um, design so we're going to take care of that and then we're going to go through the solder joints so the first thing we're going to do is we pop the rear cover off the CRT neck board and I want to take a look at the solder joints here and see what we're dealing with. The CRT socket is one of those that you should resolder, and you can kind of see where the cracks are starting to develop already. So it's time for them to be resoldered. I typically just have a go at everything in here so I don't have to mess with it in the future. Um, that should do it for this board. So we're going to go ahead and get all that resoldered. I got my soldering iron warmed up. I got my redneck fume extractor going over there. And then we'll get this done and we're going to check and move to the bottom of it. Now that all of this has been resoldered, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check uh, the other common trouble spots on boards like this that solder joints like to break are all these power ICs, such as this one, this one. The main ICs can sometimes cause issues. Same thing with these connectors. All the connectors everywhere on the board need checked. The flyback, especially, and in anything with a heat sink and these two transformers. Anything that has any kind of mass or vibration capabilities or something that gets a lot of thermal stress, such as these power ICs and stuff like that, are what you oftentimes need to check. So we're gonna do that now, and let's hope 
it's not too incredibly bad. So we're going to grab this and move it over. So, all right. So flyback. Let's take a look at the flyback. Yeah, uh, there's definitely some issues going on here. Let's see if I can get it on camera properly. So, this one especially, the very first one. You can see the nice crack around that. Yeah, see, that's a problem. That's going to cause issues. The rest of them don't look so bad, but you can see where they're just starting. So, we have to resolder the flyback. Uh, horizontal output transistor is okay but we're getting there see the oak connector let's take a look at the oak connector yep you can see green cracks there if you get the light on it just right so that's got to be taken care of uh, transformers see what do they look like no they're not quite there yet they're still okay all right power the vertical output ic let's take a look at that one um, yeah, only the extreme most pin is problematic. The main IC looks okay. Uh, vertical, or the video amplifier IC is definitely a problem. You can see cracks there. You get the light on it just right. So the, ver or the uh, video output IC has got to be redone. Uh, all the potentiometers, let's take a look there. They're not too bad. There's a couple of them that are suspicious. A little bit on the sussy side, so yeah, I gotta do that. You see the edge connector. It looks okay. Nothing wrong there. See the pot the spots that get hot, you always want to check. One of them looks questionable. Everything else is okay. So yeah, we have to resolder some stuff on this board. So it's no surprise, but it is something I wanted to point out that you have to keep in mind. There's a shield that goes here that pops off. It's just laying right there. So yeah, that's just things that you have to keep in mind when you're working on these boards is nine times out of 10, they have to be resoldered. So just expect that to be part of your process. And with that, the board is finished. Got the new cap in here where it needed to go. Everything's all done. So um, yeah, all the shields are back on the top and the bottom. So. We can conclude this. Um, that's it for this video. We're going to move on to the next installment. So if you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. Hit the like button, subscribe button, and if you want to participate in the Discord, the link is below. Thank you for watching, and until next time.